Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ultrasound Podcast with me, Tom Evans, professional trail runner and winner of Western States in 2023. I'm Brett Saunders. I'm chief crew officer and best man at his wedding. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to episode two of the Ultrasounds podcast. Uh, I am here and I am joined once again by my co-host, Brett. And today we are going to be talking all about nutrition in race, in training, uh, day to day nutrition, my favorite toppings on pizzas and everything in between. So, um, Perfect. Let's get into it a little bit, I reckon. Um, so firstly, how many in, in a week, what would be your average weekly mileage? I think, yeah, nutrition and mileage is always like super closely linked. The more you train, the yeah. more you need to eat. Yeah. I tend not to measure in distance anymore because if you ran 100 miles from Chamonix and 100 miles in London, yeah, one would take three times longer than the other. So I tend to now measure in hours of training rather than distance. So your calorie, your, so sorry, your nutrition is all based down per hour. Pretty much. No, okay. Yeah, pretty much like the energy expenditure and what it, how much it costs to do the amount of exercise is the amount of food I then need to consume around training. Okay. So your strategy for your nutrition changes almost would you say weekly uh, daily daily okay i know it's like a it's like a bank balance yeah the more you the more you spend the less you have in order to keep a stable bank balance yeah you need to put in what you put out so if you have yeah, days yeah, where you don't spend very much you don't need to put as much in okay but if you're about to spend loads you might need to put a little bit more in yeah and then once you've spent them once you've spent it you need to restock it okay so let's talk uh nutrition and fueling in training so so talk to me if you're having a big day how many hours is that so probably yeah a big day specific to utmb would probably be six seven hours run yeah. and then maybe an hour in the gym okay so within that six seven hours what are you looking at fueling how how are you fueling what are you using um i, I think again it changes like each I take each run like as its own sort of thing. So there'll be some runs that I'll do like a bit of a race replication where yeah. I am practicing my nutrition for a race. And yeah, take UTMB, for example. A race like that, I tend to average a, around 115 grams of carbohydrate per hour. Okay. And I guess like what what that looks like changes yeah a lot um and how are you taking so you're 115 did you say yeah 115 okay so how are you taking them in is it through gels is it through drinks is it through other sources how how does that again a real mixture um okay. so for me my standard would be a morton 320 drink mix yeah. which is 80 grams of carbohydrate and then a morton gel 160 which is 40 grams of carbohydrate, which makes it super, super easy. Yeah. Because running is hard enough without having to think, oh, how many calories am I consuming? Yeah, yeah. And you need to, like I said, you need, if you're spending it, you need to refill yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, okay. So 120 grams is a bottle and a gel. Like for me, that is so easy. Yeah. And I think that's the, that would be my standard and that's sort of my in-race, yeah, skeleton, what it looks like. But there'll be points where, for a long run, like seven hour run, I will also want to take real food. So there, yeah, there are a couple of different recipes that I will use that I'll put up on my socials uh, the day that this episode is released. So yeah. you can try them out. But I, I think ultra running is a sport in which this is it's relatively new, but cycling and long distance cycling, take Tour de France, for example. Yeah. Like they have got so much experience in making foods yeah. for prolonged endurance and they're, those days are pretty similar so like one of the things that they will eat are these like rice cake rice ball things yeah that's made with real rice and you can mix it with like either a sweet like nutella or biscoff which is just a beaut yeah absolutely. um or savory things like ham and cheese um and yeah those are the sort of the typical foods that 
I would eat on out on the trail if I can be bothered to make it before. Yeah. And if I'm rushed for time, I'll just have a banana. Okay. Um, and how does a banana compare to that for? A banana is about 20 grams of carbohydrate. Okay. So if, yeah, if you were trying to fuel solely on bananas you'll end up carrying like a enormous backpack so i guess like you've then got to figure out like how much can i actually carry yeah yeah and if you're water if you so you're so if you're on seven hours six seven hours and you're doing you're filling up a bottle and having a 320 every hour yeah you're not taking a camel pack i presume no you're no take, no you're i just, just filling I'll, up on the route i'll use two or three bottles but then that then goes into like your route planning yeah. How far am I going to have to do loops because I need to fill up with water? Yeah. Are, or, are you then also taking on water as well, or is that just is that just the bottle with the three twenty in, and and then a bottle of water? Tip, yeah. Yeah. Typically, what I'd have is I'd carry two bottles of water, two five hundred milliliter bottles of of liquid. Yeah. One of them will have carb mix in. Yeah. The other one will be water. Okay. And if I feel like I need the water, then I'll drink the water as well as the carb drink at a time like if it's hot for example like i like to have a bit of a mixture of water and carb drink mm -hmm. but if it's not particularly hot then i probably won't touch the water but i'll then have a spare i'll then have another sachet of 320 drink mix Thanks. that once one of them is finished i can then fill up the other one it just means that you can stay super flexible yeah absolutely and in terms of that 115 120 grams of carbs an hour how do you get to that figure it's a great question. Yeah. Uh, and I think a lot of people look at the pros now and a lot of people are talking about sort of more carbohydrate, the more carbohydrate, the better. And for me, to a certain extent, like that is the case, but there is definitely a sweet spot for everyone. I think old sports science was like 60 to 80 grams an hour was yeah. plenty, but I've, I've been to the lab and I'm fortunate enough to get to go to the lab and get tested to see how much it costs my body to move. Yeah. Um, and that's that's the most accurate way of doing it because, yeah, you wouldn't. Yeah, I guess it's it's a little bit like driving a car. If your foot is just constantly on the accelerator, you're going to burn through fuel much faster. You're not that economical. Yeah. But okay. if you're sort of cruising around driving really sensibly like an ultra is. Yeah. Then you're not burning as much. But I would much rather have a little bit too much in my body than a little bit too less because that's when things that's when things start to go wrong. Yeah, okay, fine. Um, okay, so we touched a little bit on how you're fueling within your training, like hour by hour, and that, and I presume that translates into the race. Yeah, exactly. Like that, I guess that old saying of like, don't do anything on race day that you haven't done in training. Don't try anything yeah. new on race day. Yeah. So for me, like a race is just an extension of training because it's, it's exactly the same. And a race is actually way easier because... Yeah. I've not got to plan the route. Yes, I've got to plan how long it's going to take me to get from point A for, from the start to the first checkpoint and then to the second checkpoint. So yeah. I know how much I need to carry. And that's when, going back to the last episode, that's where the crew is so important yes. because they are the ones who need to know, okay, it's, Tom's taken an extra 20 minutes here. Okay, well, we need to now give him another 20 grams of carbohydrate. Yes, okay. So understanding kind of how that race is going time-wise and yeah, taking everything into, cons into consideration. Thanks to Plasmade for sponsoring the pod. Plasmade is a complementary plant-based adaptogen that has benefits across performance and recovery, as well as reducing travel stress. It's only to be taken pre and or post-race and training sessions, not during. Fundamentally, Plasmade, through its only active ingredient, French maritime pine bark extract, increases endogenous stabilised nitric oxide production, a vasodilator that increases oxygen uptake in the bloodstream and better circulation, as well as triggering powerful anti-inflammatory and antioxidant effects. By Plasmade preparing and optimising the body, the efficiency of your in-race supplementation and hydration intake is increased. So, in summary, you perform better and recover faster. Allow me to introduce you to Plasmade by using the code ULTRA20. That is ULTRA20 at the checkout on the Plasmade websites to receive a 20% discount. And join me in using Plasmade. Okay, so as an example that you've just given there, you've come into the aid station 20 minutes, uh, sorry, an hour late or whatever, 20 minutes late and need another 20 grams of carbs for that. What is your then go-to? I mean, is there a, will you take on a banana? As you mentioned, that was a 20, that's 20 grams of carbs. Or what is, 
what, what, what would be your go-to? And I guess it's super different depending on where you're racing. Like if you're racing in the US, in my opinion, like there's some weird things at egg stations. Like it's all, mostly it's all pretty sweet stuff. Like they'll have sweets. You see some people drinking like pickle juice. Okay. Um, some people swear by it and say don't knock it till you've tried it. But is, is there carbs in pickle juice? No, there's no carb, but it's like it's like for hydration and uh, okay, to see. supposedly stop you from cramping. And some people swear by it, and yeah. that's brilliant. But it's not my not your that, cup of tea. That's not tickling my pickle. <laughs> 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 so, and I think that's where like whereas if you're racing in Europe, yeah. Like, it's super European. So there'll be cheese, there'll be salami, there'll be bread. And I think if you're having a really good day, again, it's really easy to follow your nutrition plan. But if you're having a really bad day, like, a lot of the time it then comes down to, that like, intuition, what you feel like you need. Like, it, I've had chicken soup in races. Yeah. And I guess the, the numbers then slightly go out the window. Yeah. You're, maybe you're not fueling, but you're listening to your body. So I think, like, that has always got to be a it's a really careful consideration but going into an aid station like i'll always have a spares bag yeah with that has got a pre-made morton 320 drink mix it yeah. will then have a couple of extra gels and then maybe a couple of bars as well so my crew if i am late will know okay well tom was late he needs to consume something while he's here maybe we'll take another minute here yeah to make sure that he gets this fuel in um and are you out and out throughout that race are you like you just said there it's actually depending on what you need rather than well we're not putting the nutrition and the fueling out the window but like like you said the chicken soup might not have given you the 120 grams that you might have needed where it, there's quite a fine balance there because what you might want and what you need are two maybe completely different things 100 percent. So, so so on that like where do you go with that one i mean are you thinking oh i, I need a coca-cola here or i need a red sorry i need red bull here um do you know what i mean yeah i think it's really it's a really interesting question because you have a plan yeah. the only thing that is guaranteed is something is going to go wrong in that plan yeah. like we're this is ultra running we're not uh, we're out in the mountains it might start raining it might snow like there's so many uncontrollable factors yeah so sometimes numbers being completely tied around these numbers yeah is not healthy okay so you need to be really flexible but i know in order for me to perform my best 115 120 grams of carbohydrate is my gold standard it's what i'm aiming for yes okay whether i hit that or not yeah that's the yeah, that's the aim. That's what's always bringing me back towards it. And yes, things will change in the race. And there'll be points where your stomach might not feel good, but then it's just about problem solving. Yeah. Like, and I like what I enjoy about, what I really enjoy about ultra running is solving those problems out, out on the trails. Like what if, like I've gone through aid stations where I forgot to pick up my bag of gels. Yeah. So then you're there with very little and then thinking, oh my gosh, like, what do I do? Mm. But that then your head then just starts thinking, okay, well, I know where the next aid station is. Yeah. It's a non-crude one. It's the race official one. Yeah. But okay, well, I know, I've done my prep before, so I know what they're going to have in there. Okay, so I know I just need to make sure I pick these up. Yeah. And I think that's like going on the numbers can be really useful, but I think it can also derail your race at the same time. But just because you've got a plan doesn't, doesn't mean, mean right. doesn't mean that it's right or that doesn't mean that that's what's going to happen in and the race and you've got to keep an eye on actually how you're feeling throughout the whole thing because ultimately yeah 120 car carbs might be your golden ticket to doing really well but you might feel terrible the whole way and... exactly and if you just keep flogging a dead horse and just keep trying to do something that isn't work i don't know what's the uh there's a the definition for stupidity i think is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results yeah, yeah like absolutely. you end up just knocking on a closed door yeah and if it's not working it's not working you need to be really adaptive and flexible on your feet and i think in my opinion that's what makes like very good trail runners into the best trail runners in the world yeah is being able to change things on the go because if i take my western states uh plan for 2023 yeah it was a mixture of like i had real food as well at the aid stations but i didn't have any 
So what were those real foods that you were eating in the aid station? They were those they were those rice the rice cakes. The rice cakes and some Morton bars as well. Okay. But I didn't touch them. Like that wasn't like so I changed the plan midway through the race and then my crew knew that that was what I was doing. So they would instead of having they'd still have those out as yeah. an option for me to take, but knew, okay, well, instead of having one of these and again they're 25 grams of carbohydrate yeah so i just swap it with a smaller gel gel 100 yeah and then that means that i'm absolutely fine Mm. um okay but then i guess it then gets a little bit more i guess a little bit more difficult to track like calories and carbohydrates are really easy to track whereas caffeine on the other hand might be a little bit more difficult and like i'm not carrying a can of red bull around me around with me in between the races so that's something that i'm only going to be consuming at the aid stations yeah and with all the best intentions like i'm not going to be stood there still for a minute sort of sipping it nicely putting it into yeah. a glass with some ice cooling myself down i'm um popeyeing it i'm sort of opening it i'm <laughs> crunching the can <laughs> long arming and doing it as quickly as i can and yeah. i like i use racing last weekend at transylvania as an example like climbing up to the highest point in the race i felt absolutely horrendous yeah and my nutrition plan at that aid station did not include having a can of red bull like it wasn't the plan yeah i saw you absolutely you crushed one when you got up there but i was able even however horrendous i was feeling i knew right in order to get myself back on track i need a big uh yeah i need to ingest carbohydrate and caffeine quickly yeah. And using the gels hasn't been necessarily working. So let's change things up a little bit. I guess it's a small risk, but it's a it's an educated risk because I've done it before, I've done it in training, and like I say, racing is just an extension of training. So yeah. So you, so you just you touched on it there then with the caffeine. So are you training in the week with caffeine and in on every run so or not every run, every other run. So if for example that situation like you just explained comes up you can then almost rely that your body and your stomach is going to allow it in, in the moment sort of thing. For Yeah, and I think for me, like the hard sessions, I'll use caffeine for. Like yeah. I drink coffee every morning. Um, it's one of my it's one of my very few hobbies outside yeah. of... Uh, Still need to get better on that uh, the uh, coffee art. Though. I don't know. It's improved massively really? recently. I, yeah, I've done a couple of courses now. Um, <laughs> nice. You've got to have hobbies. You've got <laughs> you've to have got hobbies. hobbies. <laughs> yeah, coffee and chickens. Um, <laughs> but again, good protein on, on the eggs there. <laughs> bringing it back to the nutrition. Yeah. So, yeah, I think for the hard sessions, I'll use caffeine. Yeah. Um, and for the long runs, I'll also use caffeine, especially if I'm doing like a race replication. But there'll be other times where I won't use caffeine. Yeah. And I'll only use it if I absolutely, if I feel like I need to. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, I guess you want to, as soon as you start taking caffeine in a race, you need to keep taking it. So Throughout um, that race? Throughout or... that yeah, race. Okay. So for a short-ish race, so take for a seven-hour race, for example. Yeah. Like I'll use caffeine beforehand and I'll have a can of Red Bull 60 minutes before um 60 minutes before the race starts and then but it, and then i'll keep using caffeine throughout that race and around about 80 milligrams an hour which just is, jumping in here with your caffeine obviously you've mentioned three different types so you've got the a coffee red bull and a gel yeah uh, in a race are you using all three of them are you using just one of the three what, what, what are you i typically using? won't use i won't use coffee for a race okay um it's always really difficult to know exactly how much caffeine you've got in a coffee. Without being yeah. too nerdy, each bean is different. Okay. Depending on how long ago it was roasted, yeah. it's different. And it might keep changing okay. as it as the profile continues to develop. Yeah. Whereas with the Red Bull, I know in a normal can there's eighty milligrams of eighty milligrams of caffeine. Yeah. Which I know is what I need to take every hour. So I know if I've got the ability, I've got the ability to have an aid station every hour. So at Western States, for example, every hour there was an aid station. Yeah. At UTMB, it's a little bit different and it's a little bit more spread out. But I will only start using caffeine at UTMB when I start getting tired because okay. it runs through the night. So I don't necessarily want to take caffeine at just before the race at 6 p.m. Because then I've got to be caffeinated for the next hopefully 20 hours yeah um so it's it's really difficult but if you start feeling tired then it's something that you need to implement but if you're not feeling tired then maybe 
yeah, you'll change a little bit, a little bit on the go. So yeah, during races, for me, Red Bull is the... Just out of interest, why wouldn't you want to be caffeinated for those 20 hours? It's just such a long, it's such a long period. And I get like, there is, there is risk of stomach issues. And I guess yeah. that's the, that's the elephant in the room is the more you consume, the more chances that you're going to have a bad stomach. And okay. you look at the reasons for DNFing in ultras, the majority of DNFs come from bad stomachs. Okay. Because I think a lot of people don't necessarily train how they're going to race and they then do something new on race day. Yeah. So what I'm trying to do is reduce the risk of that happening by yeah, basically just having a picnic when I'm out, <laughs> when I'm out on a long run. So, so bring it back down to like a, an amateur runner then in terms of who don't, who don't have the... I mean, they have access to things like the Morton caffeine and stuff like that. Would you advise before they go on a run to have a coffee to, I mean, or have a Red Bull if that's what, if they're going for a long run and, and they're feeling like they need, need to pick me up or something like that? It's a good alternative because obviously Morton is great, but the availability to someone to have as much as they need is, it, it's expensive. It, it's not, it's not unrealistic, but it's, it can be a little bit out of reach. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's where, that's where like every runner is an individual like mm. just because one person does one thing that doesn't mean that everyone has to do it in the same way so i think you find like what what works for you yeah and what works for you brett might be something that is different for me well 100 percent. well just go back onto the more so the fueling like you're very fortunate that you've had lots of testing to know that the 120 grams of carb in an hour is where you need to be um, I've been out running plenty of times and not had anywhere near enough carbs on me or gels to know that I need, I mean, I've crashed hard sort of thing. And I guess, I guess where I'm trying to get to is how does the everyday runner know? Is it just through testing, going out running, eating more gels and trying different forms of nutrition, um, to get to that point, um, without being, without doing testing? Cause let's be honest, not everyone out there or let everyone listening to this is going to go to the lab and find out. Yeah how many carbs they need exactly like i think i think going to the lab and finding that out is it's definitely a yeah it's definitely a step that you can take that yeah. is open to everyone like yes yeah. it's yes it is expensive um but if this is something that you're putting lots of time and effort into and you've already identified that having stomach issues in a race is one of the key risks and key worries of a race mm. then it might be something worth considering yeah but apart from that like it is just trial and error like yeah. there'll be times that you will feel like, oh, I didn't feel that good in this run or oh, actually I felt really good in it. And like I comment on all of my, I probably write like four or five sentences after every run that I do in training uh, on training peaks for my coach so he can see. And then we keep a really nice log, a nice diary of everything. And I, OK, well, this is what we use here. It worked. Yeah this is what we use here and it didn't work. Like, do we want to try that again? Or are we happy just sort of brushing that across? But like, there are so many different things that you can do in training. So I just want to jump in and say a massive thank you for Garmin for sponsoring. I've been using Garmin now for over six years. Uh, and it was actually my first watch that I bought when I was in the army. Uh, now as a professional athlete, I use Garmin 24 uh, seven to measure not just my training, uh, but my HRV and also tracking my sleep. For me, I find the most valuable things about my Garmin is using the features such as Pace Pro and Climb Pro for when I'm racing. This really helps me to gauge the effort, uh, especially going uphill to make sure that I don't go too hard too soon and I'm able to finish the race off in style. Finally, and I think the most important thing is the battery life. Having a watch that can last longer than you can out on the trails is an absolute game changer and looking forward to using Garmin for the rest of the season. Um, okay, so let's talk about before races for you. Um, before Western States, um, what was your build-up? What was the pre-race uh, preparation? As in, in the morning of the race, sorry. Yeah, I think Western States is it's a difficult one and it's an early morning race start. It's a uh, 5 a.m yeah. race start so you're getting up super early um so for me like i like to have finished my last meal three hours before the race starts and that for me is it's always a super super basic meal it's either like a little bit of rice 
yeah. with some yogurt uh, or it's as simple as just a bowl of cornflakes or some white bread with some jam with no seeds. I don't know why no seeds, yeah. but that was what a nutritionist once told me and that's what I've, it's worked. So <laughs> if it's not fixed, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Absolutely. Um, and then, yeah, after Western State, so I had that. I then went back into bed um, and then 90 minutes before the race starts, I then have my uh, sodium bicarbonate yes um which has also got 40 grams of uh carbohydrate in and i guess what what the bicarb does in the race is it's like a lactic acid buffer so what it helps to do is when you're running hard you're building up lactic acid in your muscles yeah what this then does is it helps to get that lactic acid out of your muscles and into your blood so you're you can then break it down so it's not sort of clogging up in your muscles and you're feeling really slow, sluggish, crampy. Is that, a, is that an every race pre? Yeah, this is a, this is an every race. And then, but it's also before some key training sessions because gotta... we train how we race. Absolutely. Okay. But an early morning start has got some problems to it. Yeah. Um, so after the bicarb, I'll then sort of, again, get back into bed, relax a little bit. And then I'll then have a Red Bull somewhere between i'll probably open it 60 minutes before the race mm. and finish it 30 minutes before the race when you say get back into bed are you going back to sleep or dozing you're literally just going sometimes okay. if i'm if i'm normally i'm pretty nervous so i can't actually fall asleep but and this is quite a specific question a lot of people who eat and then lie down their food doesn't digest i mean how are you feeling before race are you is it for a morning race it's always tricky and maybe my um my system isn't firing on all cylinders. So a lot of the time, yeah, your body, it's something that you need to take into account. Yeah. Um, if you've not been to the bathroom in the morning, yeah, it might need to be something that you do at the beginning of a race. Absolutely. Um, and which is, it's definitely something to, definitely something to consider. So would it be, and but I guess then what your, it's all like a trade-off. I yeah. probably could get my body moving better if I did everything an hour earlier, yeah, but I would prioritize an extra hour of sleep rather than stopping for 30 seconds in a race. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I, yeah, I think it's, it's definitely, it's definitely consideration. And then as soon as the race starts, I'm fueling, mm. I'm fueling throughout. And like we said, for Western States, I was all on liquid and gels, um, which is yeah, pretty different to other races. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, moving on to another race, UTMV, obviously, different start time um so you've got the whole day before i mean what is your day build up to that in in comparison because yeah i guess i try and keep it as as close as as close as possible and one thing that i do for all races is i try and cut all pretty much all fiber out of my diet um three four days before the race starts and what fiber does is Fiber likes to sit in your stomach and it also absorbs loads of water. So it's pretty heavy. So you can actually not gain weight because it's not real weight. It's yeah. water weight, but you're still having to carry it round. It yeah. also then sits in your stomach and bounces up and down, especially running downhill. It can be sort of really aggravating and you do then get sort of some real GI issues. So cut all of that out. Um, it's then just very boring. Lots GI issues, sorry. What was... uh, gastric. Oh, I see. Sorry, sorry. So like stomach issues. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, it's a lot of... So I'll have a, a smallish breakfast, a smallish lunch, and then a yeah. smallish sort of early dinner, I guess. But again, I finished three hours before. Um, and But it's it's not a breakfast. It's more of a... Yeah, it's, it would be a rice. Yeah, a big, big plate of rice with an egg, for example. Okay. So a little bit of protein, but the vast majority of carbs and it's all it's basically all beige or white food like i don't eat it's not the healthiest i know but it's works it, for you it's kind of what you need to do and it's only for yeah three four days before a race and yeah so i guess it's a it follows a really similar structure three hours before the race i'll finish my last meal and then 90 minutes before the race i'll have sodium bicarb uh and then 60 minutes to 30 minutes before the race i'll then have a red bull but for a race like utmb i would probably end up having that red bull a little bit earlier because i don't want to 
be caffeinated going straight into the race because I don't I want to reserve my caffeine for when I start getting yeah, tired yeah. for when I really need it the most in Cormier for example yeah. um and I guess one of the interesting things with a ra- a long race is sodium bicarb stays in your body and is useful for somewhere between six and nine hours yeah so a race like UTMB that's going to take 20 hours that's another consideration of maybe I need to take some during the race mm-hmm. but what are the risks and what are the issues with that like there's a huge chance of having stomach issues after that so again it's another thing that mm. I would train for because on race day I want to eliminate all of the what ifs and if I can do and I you're able to do that and you're able to control that in training and I think that's a really important lesson for every runner yes you might not be using sodium bicarbonate you might not be using loads of drink mix loads of gels but these are all things that you can practice in training so then on race day it's really easy and it kind of just becomes second nature and you've made the mistakes in training you've gone on runs and you've not fueled enough or you had a spicy curry the night before Hmm. and you actually think oh well maybe that wasn't the best idea (laughs) if i've got a 6 a.m run the next day it's a really important session so you think oh actually i'm gonna be a bit boring and still happy to go out for dinner but actually i'm just gonna have sort of plain rice and some grilled chicken or something along those lines i think it's yeah really important that these lessons are super transferable Mm. for pro athletes and also your everyday runner because everyone's all runners have got some point in a run and felt their stomach go slightly and think oh my gosh i need to find a bush um (laughs) that's everyone that's not just i guess a lot of that comes with just testing the more you run the more you chat the more the the more you test the more likely you're going to find what it is that you like and what you don't like sort of thing what suits your body yeah exactly and then it's then learning from those mistakes if you realize oh my stomach was really bad on this mm. run. Okay, well, why? Why did this happen? Oh, it's because I had my spicy curry the night before. Yeah. Or so is that sorry is that pre, is that pre build up to UTMB in the day quite similar to your night before a Western States? Very similar. Okay. So very you're, very. So you're similar. transferring the the day of Westerns the the night before Western States pretty much into the day before. Uh, pretty much like the forty eight hours before the gun goes off on a start line of a race. Yeah. The food is very, very similar. Okay. Um, yeah, my last big meal will typically be like 24 hours before the race. And then yep. it's small meals, little and often, I guess. Yeah. So it's pretty easy for a pretty easy for a Western States that because it's a normal. Yeah. Normally, I would train in the morning anyway. Like, yes, I'm not training at 5 a.m. Yeah. But it's a, you following a similar sort of routine of breakfast, lunch, dinner going to bed, waking up, having breakfast and running. So it's, that's a normal day, whereas for UTMB, yeah. but again, that's something that you can practice for. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You can, right. Like you can practice to do a key session at 6 p.m. Yeah. Um, and, and, and I presume that's exactly what you do. That's exactly what I do. Yeah, okay. So I'll go, I'll do, take Zuxbit's Ultra, for example. Like, yes, it doesn't start at 6, it starts at 11 p.m., but I will go through exactly the same protocol that i would do before utmb to just check check and double check it again yeah just to make sure that on race day on those a races that are really important there are no question marks yeah. like you've done everything so like it why won't it work but the joy of running sometimes it won't work yeah. sometimes for some unknown reason mm-hmm. something will not work and then again it's that ability to problem solve on the trail of okay well for some reason, I'm not able to, I can't stand the taste of this drink or my stomach's really bad. I can't think of anything worse than having a gel. Yeah. Okay, well, this is what you should be taking. This was the plan. What is plan B? What is plan C? What backup options am I either carrying or can I then change at the next aid station? Yeah, okay. Interesting. And, that, and that's something that everyone can do. Yeah. Like everyone who's got a crew in a race needs to have a spares bag at the aid stations or just with some random things that they've all tried in training, whether it's like jelly babies or whatever it is. Yeah. Like that's something that you can practice in training. Yeah. So if something does go wrong, mm-hmm. you're not derailing your whole race because one thing's gone wrong that you could have rectified. Yeah. Okay. Because racing is the important 
day. That's the bit that you're going to remember. You're spending so much time and effort Into that, and yeah. money getting ready for these races. You don't want to throw it away on race day. Huge thank you for Morton for sponsoring. I started testing with Morton in 2017 and was one of the first athletes in the UK to use it. And I've been using it every season since. I use the whole range of products, including the Drink Mix 320, the Gel 160, and more recently, Sodium Bicarbonate. The Hydro Gel allows me to hit high carbohydrate goals with no stomach issues to make me feel my best on race day. Go and give Morton a go and fuel yourself for your next race. Perfect. So Tom, I have a couple of questions for you. Um, what is the strangest thing you've eaten in an ultra? I think the strangest thing that I have had in an ultra was when I was racing at CCC in uh, 2017. Yeah. So the first year that I raced any of the UTMB races <clears throat> and my dad was crewing me um, <laughs> and he had... And at these aid stations, you've got, yeah, there's bread, there's ham, there's cheese, there's everything. Yeah. And he had made himself a sandwich for him to have for his lunch uh, that had a whole mixture of, it had everything in it. Like it was a proper leftovers sandwich that was, yeah, baguette, ham, cheese. I think there was some crisps in there, Perfect. maybe some like gherkins that he'd put in there. And it was next to my gels and my everything and i thought it was for me <laughs> so i'd take a sort of a huge bite of this sort of it's got crisps in it gherkins and i'm like what on earth so I'm expecting it to be just like a yeah. bit of bread maybe with some jam in it but yeah, that was a quite a strange one to yeah, have and i can guarantee i have not tried that in training <laughs> before <laughs> but it was it was relatively nice well says it all um i think quite a, a good one here is what is your post-race go-to meal or pr a process, because I presume you've got to get a few uh, nutrients back into your body. Yeah, exactly. So for me, it's really important here to differentiate between what type of race it is. Like for an A race, okay. I will always take a break afterwards. And for me, that break starts when I cross the finish line. Um, I, I think for me, I, the hydration is super important at that point. And then food, I guess it really changes on how the race has been, but it's what my yeah what my body is feeling like but after like a utmb your stomach shrinks so much yeah that like after utmb in 2022 we went to there's a burger place in chamonix called poco loco and our dog is called rocco so we call it rocco's um <laughs> and um i think i had like three mouthfuls of it and that was it and i was i was so full yeah um but yeah a burger like a dirty burger would be a go-to but if it's not a a race if it's like a training race or a stepping stone race like for the 48 hours after the race i try and be like not necessarily totally strict but just make sure i'm getting in protein is probably the main thing just to repair yeah. muscles um and i'd rather like overeat a little bit rather than under eat just to make sure i'm getting everything in but uh yeah, the only guaranteed thing is breakfast the next morning is an almond croissant. That's a has to be go to, but it can't. It has to. Be, I'm pretty specific with it. It can't be one that's been like cut halfway open and then the almond middle bit spread in it. It's got to be like filled in um, from one of the edges. That's how you know when you've got a good one and a great one. Doesn't sound picky at all. Um, <laughs> Proper princess. <laughs> Proper princess. Um, okay, and then what is your favourite product? Um, my go-to product now is for drink mix is yeah. uh, Morton 320 drink mix, 80 grams of carb, super easy, tastes yeah. great, can use it in the heat uh, and in cooler conditions. Yeah. Uh, favorite gel would then be the new newish Morton gel 160, 40 grams of carbs. Yeah. So well, yeah, one of those an hour each, a uh, drink and a gel is 120 grams that's my magic number um and then favorite caffeine product is just a normal og can of red bull perfect well i think we will definitely have some more questions for you next week from your followers um now one little thing that we do want to do is uh tales from the trails and uh 
What is your worst nutrition-related experience that you've had whilst running? I was thinking about this. You asked me to prepare this question, and there are two that come to mind. The first one is a short story, but I see it sets up nicely for the second one. <laughs> At Western States in 2019, there was a. I got to a aid station, and there were some sort of uh, plastic cups, sort of like a children's coloured cup, um, in this sort of tray of water um so i think oh perfect i'm really thirsty i'll drink this so i sort of scooped it out drunk it and then was sick immediately because it was washing up liquid oh it was water mixed with washing up liquid and it was it was the most vile thing ever um and then for the next like 90 minutes two hours just felt so horrendous and thankfully it thankfully didn't derail my race but yeah that was a that was a shocker but that, that is, is nothing. That is nothing, my friend, <laughs> compared to uh, to my second story. Um, Go on. Some say this would be enough to put a man off ultra running for life. Um, and I'm surprised it didn't. So in Marathon de Saab in 2017, so my first ultra, yeah. at the beginning of the long stage, sort of dehydration's taken a bit of a toll and body's sort of not really sure what's going on and... I've had these sort of horrible, dry, crunchy curries for the last three nights. <laughs> and um, yeah, my, uh, my stomach is disagreeing, okay. uh, if we put it, put it politely. Uh, but everyone will know how this feels because everyone who's listened to this podcast, I imagine, has gone through this before. Yeah. And uh, so I, I sort of jump off the trail and sort of hide duck in behind one of very very few bushes in the desert because funnily enough there aren't that many bushes in there the aren't desert. that many desert there's definitely not a portal either so i sort of heal out a little bit of a hole um and do the business and i sort of then sort of yeah at the end i'm then thinking oh no there aren't any leaves here and i've not got any uh any loo roll sort of readily available so i've got thankfully i've got two bottles uh, on my chest 750 milliliters one has got carb drink one has got water i know that the left hand one is the water i just know it is because that's what i had done for the whole race so yeah. i take the left one out and embrace sort of my european heritage and pretend that i've got a well i've got a portable b day um and so I, I B-day myself and sort of, yeah, sort everything out. Everything's fine. Pull everything up um, and get back running. And sort of, I then, yeah, maybe like a minute later is, uh, is so hot and dry. So everything's sort of dried off. So sort I've of realized it's a, it's a little bit sticky, but don't think too much of it until I sort of take a sip of out of my left bottle. That's my water. Take a small sip and sort of, Oh, that's not water. That's my carbohydrate <laughs> drink. So for the next 50K, I have got, yeah, the worst chafage you can imagine because I have bedayed myself uh, with a carbohydrate drink. Perfect. So top tip, top tip for the trails is uh, if, if in doubt, bday with water, not carbohydrate. Well, there you have it. So, everybody, that is the end of episode two. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the podcast and learned something from it. Uh, if you've got any questions, reach out to me or Brett. Just slide into our DMs um, and make sure to check out the recipe that has just been posted on my socials. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast, share the podcast so we can get more people listening to it. And until then, see you on the trails. See you next week.